Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. Retrograde Amnesia is a member of the Greenlit Podcast Network, a coalition of creator-owned podcasts focused on video gaming, entertainment, and pop culture. That's true. You can go to greenlitpodcast.com to find out about all the other great shows on the network. Valid URL. Thank you. Eric, there's a Patreon page that we have that you can Patreon. go to. Patreon.com slash retro AM. Yes, you can go there and you can get bonus episodes. Our bonus episodes for our Chrono Cross series mm. thus far at the time of this recording, we've done six episodes on, on Radical Dreamers. If that's something that you want, because we did it, so you, you better listen to it. Yes. Uh, other stuff too. So go there, check it out. Mini series and more early access, all that stuff. Eric, would you like to hear some hot sounds that I have recorded? Yes. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs chapter by chapter, beat by beat. This is our Chrono Cross series. On this episode, we seek the tears of the dragons in the hearts of the people. The people that are not in our party yet. Guess what? It's you. My name is Chris. I'm joined by Eric. Hey, Eric. I think the main protagonist in Persona 4 is named you. You? Like, why you? Why you? you? Yes. Yeah. You, Suzuki? No, not you, Suzuki. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Shenmue. So we are also, uh, yeah, Mr. Shinmu, we are also joined by the Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. You too can join us at the aforementioned patreon.com slash retro AM. We are also joined by the fake net, our post-production AI companion who's, oh God, once again serving tapioca from her body. Initializing fake net. Warm tapioca for everyone, for all the boys and girls. Today's special spice is stomach lining and chai seeds. I have also carbonated the tapioca. Chris, put out your hands. Please, Chris. It's starting to spill. Put out your hands, Chris. No, I'm not going to do it. She's serving it to you. Please eat this human food product from my body. I won't. I don't even really... Here, I would like some. I already ate dinner, okay. but um, I'm yeah, not good. Thank you. Finally, we can be a family. Eric, uh, do you have a napkin? Eric's running out of ideas. I folks. need a bib. Is ammonia poisonous to humans? We're wrapping up disc one of this game. That's right. I can't wait till we get to disc two where it's just a long uh, story dump where the guys are just sitting in chairs, right? It's not going to be just the same amount of content as disc one. Or are we about to get a content minuscule delivery f- shaped around different framing devices again? I, I, I wish we did, to be honest with you, but we're not, I don't think. So we are going to head towards the, I guess this is the end of the second act of this game, I think. Like the Lynx act. The, the dark middle chapter. The dark middle chapter. The dark middle chapter is nearing its end because we're going to become a boy again. I guess that's when you're when you're a boy, you're no longer in the dark middle chapter. I guess. But first, we've got to mop up some shit we can do in the overworld, and one of those things that we can do is go to Earth Dragon Isle to fight the Cryo Sphinx. Yes, in another world. Now, during our Earth Dragon ordeals, we could have accidentally gone here when seeking it, and found nothing, and then that would have been our tip to go to the Earth Dragon Isle home, but we have uh, game facts, and we went to the right one first, so we're going to this one now. Hashtag find the Fossicker. To mo- yes, to mop up down here. So, Eric, let me tell you about this. Yes, I deliberately didn't do this because Chris is setting up some kind of quiz show for me. By design, we here at Retrograde Amnesia have decided that Eric will skip this part so I can ask him dumb riddles because we thirst for content. Why would you ask me riddles, though, Chris? Because the cryo sphinx, who we're going to meet at the bottom of this thing, asks riddles. So prepare yourself. But you have the option to fight it or do the riddle thing, right? Yes. And if you fight it, you get the sunglasses, which increase attack power by 30%, correct? I could not confirm that 100%. I was I, I could just see that it was that sunglasses were a common drop. I see. I didn't get them, so it's it's hard to say. So you enter this place, and it's pretty much the same as the Earth Dragon Isle in in the home world except for there's way less sand the music's the same fossil valley is playing here initializing fake net. earth dragon island is playing sorry buddy and rem- remember that captain guy at the top of the plateau yes of course the he's, foreman yes he's here too and he says that some people call this place earth dragon isle but he knows it as the land where dragons sleep but he has concluded that the earth dragon story is a hoax he's been to snopes.com and he checked it out i guess that's right so 
instead of that cave, uh, instead of the sand that you have to sink down and fall into the cave, there's just a big hole, a giant screaming hole that you can jump down. I love screaming holes. Yes. And you jump down there and you access the ca- the cavern and it's pretty much the same down here. There is a guy right at the bottom who asks you if we are dumb for coming down here. And well, I was down there too, man. Yeah. I, well, I would like to say, yes, I am dumb. I'm a dumb cat boy. Why are we here? We already have the earth dragon's blessing after all. We don't need to be here, but we're here because we want to see if there's any loot here. And there's another guy down here that says there's no point in exploring further. There's just another big hole up ahead. Oh, that means you gotta. Well, it does mean you gotta because this is a video game, but this is almost true. I mean, in, in my case, I thought this was this entire section was absolutely pointless because I did not get the aforementioned sunglasses. Did you have to blow up the rock turtle things to cover up holes, any of that stuff? No dynamite? Nope. Those things are down here, but they're not blocking any passageways. We do get to meet our old friends, though, Eric. The Fossickers. Mm-hmm. They are accompanied by some little uh, dragon guys called Yellow Bellies. Do we see those before? Yes, I okay. do. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, they look like Earth Dragons, Toad Babies, kind of. But I learned something new about the Fossickers down here. Do we know this, Eric? We know everything about the Fossickers, Chris. We are Fossicker aficionados. Do we know they drop cartoon bombs? Yes. Okay. Listen this... to our previous podcast. Okay. Please refer to that previous podcast, I guess, because I didn't. That's the first time I saw it, and that uh, kind of freaked me out. Yeah, it's its own special enemy. Yeah. Spoilers for future content, but I deliberately went and uh, captured some Fossickers, a Fossicker, to fight Janice's monsters with at the oh, Grand Slam. I'm looking forward to that. So the rest of this place is pretty much the same. You don't have to fill in up the sand boils. You can just go to the one that shoots you up to the top of the plateau on the second screen and access the cavern where we originally met the Earth Dragon. But it's not the Earth Dragon here this time. When we reach the end, Draggy, who is a dragon and he knows... He knows this. He says the dragon does not exist in this world. But, Eric, there's something on the ledge. Remember that ledge the Earth Dragon was standing yeah, up on top of? Yeah, up, and it was a cool Shadow of the Colossus-like yeah. moment. It is the Cryosphinx. And I don't know how to... Did you look up this thing? Did you look at it? No, but just from the name Cryosphinx, I think T-1000-ized cryogenically frozen sphinx. It doesn't look that cool, but it does have, like, the body of a sphinx, but it has no discernible head. Like, I cannot tell well, where its mouth is, where its nose is. sphinx kind of, is defined by its body and its head. Yeah, that's true. Otherwise, so, it's just a cat. It's got the wings and, and whatnot, but uh, he jumps down and starts talking some shit to you. He speaks a lot of Latin, and I don't speak Latin, Eric, and I'm not going to read the Latin part, but I think he's just repeating himself. I'm not sure about that, Chris. I'm going to have to make a Latin fake net. Okay. <laughs> Latin fake net. What's this guy talking about? In Sibian's fake this net, the cry Sphinx says, what do you want? So I'm going to read his dialogue here, and within his dialogue, he is going to ask you some riddles. Now, Eric, do you know how to answer these riddles? In the form of a question? No, well, <laughs> rip Alex Trebek. No, you have to answer them with an elemental attack. So the answer to these things is a color. Okay, I, ele- I should have memorized enough of those. Uh, yes. So I'm going to say the attack to you? Um, yeah, you, you can name any element. Great. Too. Yes, and, and if Excellent. I don't know it, then I'm stupid. Okay. okay, got it. Okay, so the Cryosphinx first says, "'Tis foolish to challenge me. Let those who break my silence be punished." He says, I am Upheaval. the... Upheaval. Yes. I am the Cryosphinx, and thou hast trespassed on my domain. Why must thou turmoil to this land bring? I don't like turmoil as a verb. Now turmoil unto thee, I give. Depending on how thou meet this trial, thou may be allowed to leave here alive. Is this drunk Shakespeare? What are you doing? I guess. However, this be an island (laughs) to which no man has visited for aeons, and the cryosphinx is grown quite bored. If thou possesseth the courage to match thy wits to mine, thy sins may be forgiven when thou answer correctly my question six. Cryosphinx says... Ready for the rest of first riddle? Yeah, oh, I thought I was going to just cast Ice Blast on you right now. Here be an easy one to start off with. Hold on, quick question. Are these Chrono Cross related or just riddles for life? These are just riddles for life, Eric. Fuck, man. All right. <laughs> Auburn, nay the burn. Iron, pyrite, nay the fool. All that glitters is nay, but silence be blank. Answer my question. What is it I be? It's supposed to be like one element or any color element. Any color. You red. Answer. Inferno. Volcano. Wrong, Eric. It's not red. Okay, all the red things you were describing are in fact not red. Good all enough. that glitters is nay, but silence be what? What is silence, Eric? The absence of speech. It's golden. Silence is yellow. It's a good garbage song. The answer, the answer is yellow. I apologize. Okay, now I'm on to the second one. Thou art incorrect. Now hear my second riddle be. In my anger I see both the rag to charge at and the flag to stop at. Blushing, I walk the royal carpet. Answer my question. What is it that I be? Red, Terminator, Bull, Fire Pillar, Magma Bomb, Inferno. 
Good job. Ding noise. Right job, Eric. You got it. Red is the correct answer. Now, riddle number three. Can then you say riddle me this, please? Riddle me this, Eric. Riddle number three. A friend of the planet with the jealous monster's eyes. Give me a sign to proceed. Answer my question. What is it I be? There's almost no information there. All I've got is friend of the planet, which means green. Planets are green. Good job, Eric. Also, giving me a sign to proceed. Green light. Oh. Okay. Got it? Okay. Thou catch on quick, mortal. Question four. Give me a melancholy gloom, but a first prize ribbon makes me feel I've royal blood. Answer my question. What is it I be? Purple, but there is no purple element. That's right. You're wrong. So what's Royal blood? Bl- blue? First Iceberg? prize ribbon. Yes, good job. First prize ribbon, blue ribbon. Buddy, how many first prize ribbons do you think I got in my life? Uh, <laughs> Big fat zero, sir. Great. Okay. My perfect attendance certificate was a certificate, not a ribbon. Just two more to go. Like pontoon, nay the knave, or jolly roger, nay the bones. Even the top rank of self-defense be no answer from the plague. Answer my question. Feral cats. Good job, Eric. It's black. By deduction alone, ye should, my answer, already know. Deduction? What? So it's white. Yes. Purify. Good job. What the extorted is one bled with knuckles of fear, the plumage of a coward when plumage. faced with the hottest of heat. Answer my question. What is it I be? Knuckles the echidna. Great. Yes, true. That's right, Eric. It's white. Well done. Thou have solved all my riddles, and then you win the fucking battle. Victory music. So if you want to fight him at this point in time, it's actually difficult given your relative star level. But if you come back later, he is apparently much more... I don't want to gender the crowd, Sphinx Chris. It is apparently much more of a challenge or less of a challenge. That's correct. I think the guide also said that you can use the yellow plate, I think, is helpful in this because I guess... It drains. Yes. So uh, that's all I have for that. So congrats. That was the dumbest section of the game, but we did it. Where are we going next, Eric? I don't know, dude. Okay, well, the next, okay. Well, I wanted to go to Goldov because we, we need to go to Goldov home because we have Great. the dragon emblem. <clears throat> you ready to go there? Yeah, let's go. Okay, I'm heading to Goldov to see what happens. Now, remember, last time we received the dragon emblem from Goldov another. Right, from Stina there. Yes, because uh, apparently we... Oh, that... We, we brought her the Tear of Hate. Chris, when you get here, you know you're supposed to bring? The dragon emblem. Also, Orcha. So Orcha can meet Orcha. Orcha? Orcha's here? Yeah. Oh, he's the bartender in this in this world. Oh, okay, you're right. Okay, what happens when you do that? Well, he says you bring Orchard to Orchard, and he goes, "Er, er, what's going on? There's another me. Is this real, or am I just having a bad dream?" Then Orchard replies, "I am you, and you are also me. You need to think too deeply. It's just a fact of life." And then Orchard says, "There sure are some fascinating things in this world. <laughs> to think that he would come face to face with himself." And then the bartender Orchard notes, "There seems to be a shadowy thingy." standing behind him. Orcha is like, yeah, it's my dark side. And then other Orcha wonders if he has a dark side too. And he leaves. That's it. Well, it's true. He does have a dark side. Yeah, it's Hell Orcha. Yeah, Hell Orcha. Trivia question, Chris. Yes. Where is Orcha's brother? Uh, is that Belcha in Arnie? That's correct. Yes. Ding, okay. ding. Ding, ding noise. Great. There is some fun dialogue there, but it's in a later section of my notes and I'm not on paper today. Okay, so we will do that later uh, and we'll delete that part. Thank you. So you have to show the dragon emblem to the bouncer. The bouncer. The bouncer. The bouncer. And he will let you in. But before he lets you in, there's like text. White text. White text across the screen. It says, welcome travelers across the dimensions. Bring them before me. It's Stina. It is. She's like yelling from the tent outside. The first time we went into this hut in the other world. Yeah, it played Earth Dragon Isle. It did play Earth Dragon Isle. And we also wondered what that giant mound was in the back full of rocks with like a book and a... In a carpet on top or yeah. cloth on top i love books and carpet yeah that's where the dragon tear is the dragon tear is up there that's where they keep it in the other world that it had been it had been stolen so they should probably find a more secure location or get at least one more of the bouncer out front yeah there's just one more of the bouncer that's all <laughs> that's all that happens it's weird also of note eric Dorea is not here yes no one has diarrhea mm-hmm. stina wants to make things clear to serge she says seek the eldest being on el nido the dragon gods she already knows that we've seen him, and she says that she'll lend the dragon to, her, to us if we are the one chosen by the dragon gods. Shit, Eric. Why'd this happen to you, Chris? Did you forget to fight one of the dragons? I forgot to save after the sky dragon. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> awesome. So I had to go back and beat the sky dragon again. This time I beat him with draggy. <laughs> cool. 
<laughs> dragon so, on dragon violence. But I forgot to steal the white plates. I don't have that now. Oh, so, that sucks, dude. Yeah. So uh, I, I think I fucked up with some sa- with some save states or some save files or something, and never saved it. So you should be saving on a memory card you bought in 1996, like me. Yeah. Well. So later, when you go back, I was finally ready to present my, all my dragon trophies, and she doesn't say shit other than, "Hey, I'm going to give you this dragon tier. Yeah. I'm coming with you." Yeah, like as promised, she'll list a dragon tier, and she'll accompany us to the fort. Stina, join your party. Dude, am I going? Dude, I am going to use Stina. Victory music. Yes, Stina's hard, man. Stina goes real hard. Stina's awesome. Would you like some facts on Stina? I would. Can I tell you one first? Yes. I got really into her idle animation, which is two arms just moving in clockwise patterns, and one holds a sword. It's like a Mortal Kombat two animation. Friendship. Friendship. Wow. It's awesome. Okay, give me some Stina music uh, along with this victory music. Stina facts. Stina is a shrine maiden. Her age, 24. Are you serious? Yeah, she's only 53. Yeah, she's very wise for a 24-year-old. Have you ever met a wise 24-year-old? No. Her origin is Goldove Home. Her height is 5'9". She weighs 110 pounds. Pretty light 5'9". Yeah, it is. Her build is tall and slender. She is right-handed. Her Japanese name is also Stina. Her innate element is white. And by the looks of a shrine maiden, you would think that her primary weapon would be some sort of staff. Mm -hmm. But it's a sword. That means she's cool. Also, her accent is listed as proper English, which I think just means she doesn't have any special uh, Honeywood algorithms attached to her dialogue. Honeyisms, please. Yes, that's true. Her fortune, Eric, is what you would expect it to be. The fortune teller says, humph, it's useless for a spiritualist to have their fortune read. Which I guess that's true, Eric. It's a big gotcha. Yeah. I've got some extra Stina stuff if you'd like. Yes, I have decided also, like you have, Eric, mm-hmm. I've decided that Stina is cool, and I'm taking yeah. Stina. Stina's been in my party. I've played significantly beyond where we are now, and Stina has never left my party. Oh, cool. Also, I've decided that Fun Guy, he's going to my party <laughs> too, despite oh. him not being cool. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's not very good either. That's not good. So the first thing I did after putting Stina in my party is I looked up where to go get her level 7 tech. As did I, and where do you go? So, and I was shocked by where I had to go. We have to go to Garai's grave at the Isle of the Damned. All the way through the mirrors, all that stuff. Yeah, all that stuff again. And when you get there, Stina kneels at the grave and she says, I feel your pain deep within my soul. I understand. I shall fall heir to your dream. Stina received Garai's shadow, victory music. Stina can now, have you looked through, I guess you've, you've had her for a while. Stina's techs are really cool. Her level three tech is uh, she can summon Dorea. Her level five tech is she can summon the Hydra. Remember we killed the Hydra? And bone we got the Hydra or Hydra standard? Well, she summons the Hydra, but we got it after we killed the Bone Hydra. Okay. That was what we got there. And now she can summon Garai as her level seven tech. Are we supposed to read anything into that? Was she? She's too young to have been friends with Garai, right? Like, could this be a potential lost, I, well, she wasn't, lost daughter thing? Uh, well, she wasn't friends with the Hydra either. Yeah, but that's just a weird thing to tap into. I think we're supposed to read in the fact that she can reach the the beyond. Maybe Chrono Cross just didn't know what else to do with its only remaining ghost character. And she has ghost empathy. That's why she's able to do this. And she has a lot of empathy for Garai since he was, I don't know, slain by his best friend and became a ghost demon that haunted everybody. Who knows? These things happen. Did you take Stina to meet Stina? No, I didn't. Good well, job. I did. I visited another world, Goldove. When I encountered the two, she said, it is a strange feeling to be facing myself. An alternate world, whether you'll discover the future of mankind at the end of your journey is uncertain, but I will pray for your success. Then she says, there is no one here who can foresee the future of the battle. The battle between dragons, humans, and fate. Will humans change the world, or is the world fated to change? What's the difference, Chris? The difference between those two things is whether or not it's pre-programmed. And if it's pre-programmed, it doesn't fucking matter. And as we have been told by, I don't know, Miguel or one of those motherfuckers, the world is pre-programmed, right? By fate. Right. So humans cannot change the world, right? I don't think so. Okay. Well, we're going to figure that out later, I guess, along the way. Well, that's pretty cool. It, it takes two uh, shrine maidens getting, getting together to get to these deep, uh, I don't know, college party philosophical level details here. Also, that's kind of the same thing the water dragon was talking about way back when the water dragon was asking Surge if he was going to do something or not do something. Similar themes. Yes. The theming is there. Let's go deep into Fort Dragonia. You can go through Mount Pyre and get some stuff that you missed, but it's just like a red brooch, some other stuff there. Yeah, and I I was really excited going back to Fort Dragonia because I thought this was going to be a really pivotal sequence in the game, and we were going to get a lot of 
plot, but it, there's not really that much here. No, it's you're a, in and out, especially if you've already been here to get draggy and done all those puzzles over again. Yeah, that's a good point. You don't have to do all the puzzles all over again if you've already been to get draggy. It's kind of dumb that the puzzles are all the same yeah. anyway, but I mean, they've got to reuse their assets over and over again. And some things in this game are slightly rushed. So they of feel, course, or they feel rushed, excuse me. Go Fortress ahead. of Ancient Dragoons plays. Yes, Fort Dragonia, AKA. I got Steen on Fun Guy with me still. Fun Guy needs his moment. I was, I was hoping that Fun Guy was going to have a moment, although there's not very many moments to be had here. So when we do arrive, Stina tells me to place the Dragon Tear here in this front pedestal to open the fort. Yes, Lynx does this, and then it makes a beeping noise before some violent shaking occurs. Yes. Then we get through and we can go up the elevator, right? Yeah, and you go into the elevator room and Dark Surge, a.k.a. original Lynx, etc., is just there? Yeah, Evil Surge is floating here in his clown suit. He tells us that it's a little too soon for Surge to get back to his true form. Yeah, he says, so you finally made it, but this is as far as you're going to get. So this is all part of the plan. The whole thing is part of the plan. Surge is supposed to come here eventually, but not just now. Fate? (laughs) Fate or not, right? Mm -hmm. So... Lynx, original Lynx, wanted Serge's body, but now he wants Serge to get his own body back because that's part of the of the process that's being executed here. Is that is that what we're reading here? It's weird. Yeah, I don't know if we we're ordered here or what. It would always everything implies that evil Serge, new Serge, original Serge, OG Serge would be the one to topple all the dragons. If you start questioning things right about at this point in the game, I think the game starts to fall apart a little bit. I think so, but there's also something thematic to everything falling, everything in its right place, right? Everything coming together at the right moment. Yeah, that's true. by fate. Yeah, that's true. So, I guess all that uh, Dark Surge needs to do is to stall us for a little bit. Yeah, he's like, I, I need uh, five minutes yes. here, guys. So, Gotta eat some tapioca. Here, eat it with me. Yes. Thus, the battle is on Brink of Death plays. Edge of Death. This is a pretty elaborate battle. He's got a lot of different uh, variety in his, his attacks. Also, Dark. we're fighting in the elevator room. Like, yes. that's the, back, the battle background. They made an, a new Fort Dragonia battle background. For is this. this This is also where we fought the Son of a Gun, though, too, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Never mind. So maybe that was reused at least once. He has a rainbow shell to steal, and I wish more than one character could steal in this game because I'm totally over Fargo. Yeah, me too. I'm just, I've just given up, the, given up on stealing all these uh, additional accessories. You know the first thing to happen to me in this battle? Uh, you got killed? Yeah, he one-shot at Stina, and I, uh, I don't know if this is with all PS1 games, but with uh, my Sio device, if I hold L1, R1, L2, R2, and press start and select, it resets it. Yeah, I think that, yeah, maybe so. Um, so I was like, nope, that's not happening. Yeah. That is not my fate. Stina's not very good in this battle because no. she's very susceptible to some of his moves. I ended up giving her, the, I think, the gold earring that gives them a temporary boost to their HP, so she starts off like 100 more extra HP. Yeah. She I, can't get that back, but she starts off with it. Yeah, I, she, she got knocked out in, in my game as well. So the first thing I did is I just went straight at Dark Surge with Lynx. And now keep in mind that we have the Master Mune now. Mm -hmm. And that thing fucking crits every single time. It is a very good sword. And it did 400 damage on the third hit on the on with once that critical landed my guy's got what like 2500 yeah like that's more than like i later did the garai summon thing uh with with stina and it did more damage. garai shadow please not did, summon thing did you note uh the description of of stina's skills all but hers it says summon an eidolon of oh garai. cool yeah so it uses that word that would later be used in final fantasy 9 for for summons so that, i thought that was pretty neat yeah, you're right. Nine was like three or four months later. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> it did more than that, but it did not. Do, like later on in this battle, I did Ultra Nova mm-hmm. uh, with a, I think a mostly white field and that completely obliterated him. It did like a, almost over 500 damage, I believe. I think I did Saints to him and that also oh, annihilated him. Yeah. Uh, so you did a summon. Wow. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Yep. Got yeah. that field all white, as they say. I found uh, <laughs> I found out later in this, in, in my playthrough here that doing the uh doing the summons actually has some additional mechanical benefit has summon additional mechanical benefit it does I, I do think this battle will be relatively difficult if we didn't have the master mune yes we essentially got that as early well not as early as possible but before we got to the big boss rush here yes before we got the grand dream yes Th- that's what it's called in japanese right i hope the fake net corrected us last time uh, that episode hasn't been edited yet but don't worry it will <laughs> okay good job thanks fake net you're welcome Thanks, future fake net. You are welcome. Japanese fake net. どういたしまして? Okay, so anything, any other notes about this battle? No, 37 star, Pendragon Sigil A. 
Yes. So, yeah, not too climatic because Dark Surge basically says, hey, guys, you guys are impressive, but I've got to get on with my affairs. His affairs. I don't know what his affairs are. I guess this is uh, no idea. He also says besides it's too late. Yeah. So that implies that he successfully delayed your ascent. So is he going to the is he going to the Sea of Eden now to wait for us to open it up or something? Yes, uh, I, I guess so. Having played that far, that is exactly where he's going after this. And he says, goodbye, Serge. And I appreciate he doesn't call us by our link's name. Yes, thank you. Thanks, buddy. Also, my dude then evaporates. Are we going to read into that? Like, Harley can do that shit, too. Is that just a storytelling device, or can my guy actually dematerialize? Or is it, like, predator armor? I wouldn't put anything past Lynx. I'm pretty sure he can dematerialize. I'm pretty sure he's full of uh, various magics with a C, magics with a K. He's got all of them. All the magics. Take a time machine back to before the world went to hell, around the year 2000. The 80s and 90s were so rad. The movies, the music, the TV, the games? That's what I want to talk about. If you're cool enough, join us and listen to Less Than 2000, because that's all we talk about. Adam and Chad live Less Than 2000. Hi, I'm Ray, and this is my friend Alex. Hi. And we do a show called No More Whoppers. Between us, we're as old as four RPG protagonists. And now Alex will give us a funny anagram for the name of the show. Uh, big old knockers. Uh. Join us every month or so on the Greenlit Podcast Network. So then we ride the elevator to the top. All the enemies are gone, thank God. Yes. And then we zap ourselves to the top of the elevator for, what, the third time in this game? Yes, exactly. The third time in this game, if you count the dream at the beginning of the game, yes. Then we enter those huge double doors. Yeah. Now, did you notice that there's, like, glyphs around the stone, mm -hmm. around the doors, that they're, like, cave drawings of a pterodactyl? Yeah, kind of hieroglyphics a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't know if we noted that before. Before we go in, though, Stina says, you must see and confirm yourself who you really are. Truth shall manifest itself once you believe in your heart. Yeah. Which just means you have to go in here alone, buddy. And I believe that's unique Stina dialogue. Oh, really? Question. Well, I mean, you had Stina as well, yeah. so... But I believe that Stina will show up here regardless of Oh, your she'll party. just show up? Yes. Cool. So, fun guy doesn't say shit, according to my notes, and then Serge goes inside alone. The center pedestal, he walks up to it and plinks the MacGuffin in the center. Yes, all six of those dragon statues uh, are all lit up just like they were in another world yes. room here. Across time. The screen darkens and Garden of the Gods plays. Yes, Sea of Eden plays. The walls are becoming illuminated. Yes, the, the back half slowly becomes an illuminated mural. Then a white ball radiating, radiating white light starts pulling white text on the screen. The script credits this as Dragonian Record, and we get to experience a planetarium light show. We're getting a, a significant lore dump here from a non-important character, and we're being told a lot of things that we have not been shown yet. But nonetheless, I still found this stuff pretty cool. So the first line says, All life on this planet was born in the sea, which... I think we've heard that before in this game, right? We've heard a lot of Mother Sea. I mean, amino soup, right? That's just... Well, yeah, that's true from a evolutionary studies standpoint, but also I think it's been true in this game where there's been a lot of importance put on the sea, especially from the villagers in Arnie. Yes, we will kill Mother Sea, etc. Then the orb moves across the mural on the wall. And we should note, too, as the orb moves across the wall, it starts to reveal more of this uh, of a mural, which we'll talk about as, we, as it re is revealed. The life forms softly slumbered within the womb of our mother sea until eventually they developed free will and were able to swim about the ocean freely. Then the orb moves again and it begins to reveal a large dinosaur mm -hmm. in the mural. So we're getting some uh, some history, some some lore, something something of that nature. The next line is, then there came those that not satisfied with life in the water looked up from the ocean floor towards the blue skies and dreamt of the feel of the land. Aeons passed before their preposterous dream became a reality and they rose up from the seas onto the earth. Then the orb moves once again and we can now begin to see off to the edge of the screen a falling star heading towards the earth from the sky. So it kind of diverges at this point, but before this, this is almost basically not identical text, but identical sentiment to Area 5 of Res. Where you go through the evolution of human history. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The land became full of all kinds of creatures. Among these, the dragon lizards and the more evolved reptites thought they would reign over the earth forever. And for a long while, it seemed like they would, however. So, reptites, that's a Chrono Trigger reference. We're going to talk about reptite lore at the end of this sequence, okay? You say so. Yes. So then the orb begins to move and it reveals some additional things from on this, on this uh, landscape where things are on the earth are on fire and being destroyed. However, the unforeseen coming of the Mighty One from the heavens suddenly smashed their kingdom to pieces. 
That one was known as Lavos. The great crimson flame wielding absolute power, Lavos buried the dinosaurs, the kings of the land, in the space of a night. Then the orb moves to its final spot that reveals the entire mural. From the beginning of the mural, we can see the evolution of dinosaurs all the way to their destruction by the falling star, which we had now know is Lavos. We also would know that if we played Chrono Trigger. Falling star as opposed to fallen star Lucifer. Yes, indeed. And a chapter in Xenogears. However, the timid apes who had lived hidden in the forests came into contact with a crimson flame that fell from the sky and evolved into humans. Or perhaps it was not evolution, but transformation. In this way, humans increased in number and filled the earth. The fearsome progeny, fearsome progeny of Lavos, who, like their progenitor, began to devour our mother planet. Yes. Environmentalism. Eric, the progenitors of Lavos, you know what they are, Eric? They're humans. Humans. Yes. Then the orb returns to the center of this room and all of the glyphs light up. Now, it's pretty this, elaborate kind of play. Let's first, Eric, go into the next section of this podcast. It's called Chrono Trigger Reptite Lore and Retcons. Probably reverb that. Thanks. So this is according to the, the Chrono Wiki. Would you like to hear about the physiology of reptites? Let's do it. Okay. Excuse me. As reptiles, reptites are stronger and hardier than humans. What They're, classifies an anthropomorphic organism as hardy? Uh, this, when you punch its skin, it doesn't reverberate like uh, Yokozuna does when you punch him in the stomach. Nice. Okay. So their tough, scaly skin protects them from dangers and comes in variations of green, blue, and purple. Despite their physical resilience, they are sensitive to lightning, which stuns them and leaves them vulnerable to physical attacks. That's very convenient because Chrono's element is lightning. He can use lightning spells. So yeah, hell yeah, buddy. Lightning's also a badass lady. Way to go. Yes, true. Reptites are cold-blooded which is why their castle sat amid a chain of volcanoes and why they face extinction in the coming ice age. They have large round heads, reptilian eyes, and they're mostly bipedal. If you're cold-blooded, wouldn't moving closer to the equator um, serve you better than volcanic surroundings? Yes. Just saying, small peanut brains. Yeah, that's true. That's why they died out, Eric. Okay, next, according to the Chrono Wiki, this is some information about their society and culture. You ready? Sure. They have a caste system? What do they got? Due to the lack of specimen present in-game, it is difficult to detect any sexual dimorphism in the species. Well, that's great. In fact, the only example is Azala, their leader. That's a boss in Chrono uh, Trigger. Wide hips and breasts are not present in the female reptile because reptiles are born from eggs. They lack these gender differentiating features seen in gestating mammals. Reptiles hatch eggs. I think this is. I think we're just going to Encarta now. I, don't, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm reading Encarta now. Reptiles hatch from eggs and immediately leave the nest without requiring any special nourishment from their mamas, mothers. The only two attributes that prove Azala's gender in game are her pink garments, which that's kind of an assumption, right? And her character dialogue. But Eric, this is only true in the retranslation that is present in the DS slash Steam slash mobile versions. So. Uh, that's the only time any one of these folks is gendered at all. Eric, I have more. Are you ready for more? Reptites. Are you listening? Reptar. You're going to have to hear it later because you're going to have to edit it. So, Have you heard of the Lost Sanctum? <laughs> yeah, of course not. Yeah, yeah. Ne- neither have I because I have not gone deep into the uh, modern versions of Chrono Trigger. Yeah, also I'm, it's lost. Yes, I am mostly a, a, a savant of the original Super Nintendo release. So I've never seen this. So this is an alternate dimension that you can access in the DS slash Steam slash mobile version of Chrono Trigger. This is like the skater Jesus version of the Bible. Uh, Yes. This is a spot where you can complete various quests in exchange for high level gear in the kind of the towards the end game slash post game portion of of, of Chrono Trigger. We aren't going to go through this, Eric, chapter by chapter, beat by beat, because I haven't played it. But we're going to go through some of the high level narrative lore and takeaways courtesy, Eric, of the Chrono Wiki. Lost Sanctum. What it really is is a colony of reptites that became lost in time. Play, lost in time, plays Be, Years before the 65 million BC. It's known as Lost Sanctum, as, as I mentioned, and it featured an entire swath of land in a fully preserved and populated reptite village. Chrono and his pals can visit the Lost Sanctum. The citizens illustrated some prototypical elements of reptite and dragonian culture. It's kind of a little bit of a retcon a little bit. They're just kind of moving some, some Dragonian stuff into here. But, You're very excited. But, you know, including the existence of shrines that require an emblem to access, it's called the Reptmark. 
Kind of like the dragon emblem, Eric. Those are tattoos for this podcast? Yes. We're going to learn later, I, I think, that the Dragonians are, are descendants of the Reptites if we can't already intuit that based on what we've already learned. So these things make sense. They also have a ritual of fusing two prisma stones, which kind of sounds like a mixture of the prism equipment that you can get in both this game and in Chrono Trigger and the Dreamstone, which is the material that the Masamune is made out of and I think was also buried beneath the earth and somehow... Yes, you must uh, dreamcast the Dreamstone. Yes, dreamcast the Dreamstone. That's what calls the evolution of humans from uh, apes to humans, etc. That's how we got Sonic. So these, uh, you fuse these two prisma stones together and it carries a similarity to, of course, Eric, the fusion of the two dragon tears to create spoiler deleted. In this side quest, you discover that the Reptites believed in mythology and even considered Chrono and his friend gods after he, after he helps them and whatnot. I believe you access this place somewhere in the 600 AD north of Ozzy's Fort. It's some, some port probably during the Faded Hour section of the game. Ozzy's in a pickle. Ozzy's in a pickle. Ozzy's in a pickle. And also, I'm out of my pickle because I don't have to talk about this anymore. Eric. It's great, Chris. Good well, job. Yes. Uh, then FMV starts after Chris reads all that shit. Chris is incorrect. FMV is full motion video. This is CG. Eric, if you render CG and then shoot it in, in in full motion video, isn't it just full motion video? Full motion video is usually reserved for live human beings. Ground Zero Texas, Night Trap, Wirehead. I feel like that wasn't Always the case. I feel like FMV was also used for these pre rendered It's the 90s, scenes. man. Nomenclature was fucked. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so, uh, Carrie, do you have? Do you want to describe this? Well, the us? CG audio, which is now playing behind us. Yes. Uh, Surge touches the center of the pedestal. It's covered in balls of liquid. Then he crouches down, and it becomes a blue jewel. He becomes baby Surge in the ocean. He opens his eyes. He rapidly evolves to teenager Surge, and then busts out butt-ass naked, and he cleverly obscures his junk with his arm. Mm -hmm. My boy is wet as hell. <laughs> He stands up, stares at his own hands, then looks back at the camera and smiles, staring at the shattered tear in the center of the room. We're Surge again, Chris. That's what that was. It, it, it's happening. Eric, does any of this imagery or anything make sense? I mean, logically, no. However, as the soaring protagonist of Chrono Cross mixed with contemporary anime influence and Japanese storytelling, yeah, it makes perfect sense, too. <laughs> okay. I understand I, everything. Because I, I, I mean, you I... You touch the tear, you, there's... MacGuffins combine, body swap, you're a real boy again, Chris. Okay, we, we found one of the fully formed or unbroken MacGuffins, which is the Dragon Tear that we just accessed. We have a shattered MacGuffin in our pocket, and I guess now we have a sh another shattered MacGuffin in our pocket. And also, Surge being the, being the Chrono Trigger, the Assassin of Time, is also a MacGuffin himself, I think. But uh, just I have so many eggs of dreams, and they all must shatter. Yes, <laughs> it's what's got to happen. I mean... When when Kato, uh, w you know, when he directed this game, he was fresh off of uh, uh, of Xenogears and Final Fantasy VII, for that matter. So uh, he was thinking about them shattering Egg of Dreams. He's bros with Mitsuda, right? Doors open back up. Serge walks the hell out of there. He's fully clothed now, Eric. Did he bring his clothes with him? I thought about that. Yeah. You know how the only reason... Remember how we were like, why didn't Lynx get to change clothes, but Serge changed into his clown suit, right? Mm -hmm. Old Serge, evil Serge, purposely left Serge's original clothes there because he knew my, my wet boy was going to be very naked. That's that's why he had a change of clothes, oh. so the old duds could be in that room. I, I was going to say he was storing them in his giant hat. <laughs> his, big, his big boy hat. His big dub hat. Okay, so now we're back. We, we, we go outside. Yeah. Cena tells me my eyes, which foresaw the truth, shall help me regain my trust among your comrades. Uh, you know what that means, Eric, right? That they can look in my eyes and know I'm a real boy? Well, that also means we can get all our party members back. Oh, I see. Yes. Signaling. Thanks. There is nothing we can do about the dragon tier. Its shattering does not come as a surprise. However, you also carry the fate of the dragon tear from another world. The broken pieces of love and hate, although contradictory, they are two sides of the same coin. Two one-winged angels. Mysterious force may come to light when the two pieces are united. Perhaps this force will be the legendary Chrono Cross. Oh my god, the Chrono Cross. She said the title, she wins the game. Yes. Good job, Stina. The only problem is the shrine, which is said to give life to the Chrono Cross, is nothing but a cavern inside Divine Dragon Falls, Surge. You may hold the key to bringing forth its powers. Surge nods this one away. Eric. <laughs> what? I have a question. Uh-huh. Are they just making shit up now? Yeah. Okay. They're just throwing proper nouns. And I can forgive you for all the, the reptite stuff because that kind, of, that kind of stuff has been seeded throughout this game because we've been hearing about Dragonians you for a long time. You don't me for it, dude. No, I'm not. I mean, well, I don't mean you. I mean the royal you. I mean Mr. Kato. Kato-san. 
This Chrono Cross stuff, no. We haven't heard about this stuff at all. We have one more proper noun, Chris. Yes. It tells us the dragon tear shattered, but transformed into the tear of love. Yes, the tear of love. Thank the you. The opposite of the tear of hate. Oh, God. Um, also, do you know the only other time that the, the Divine Dragon Falls were mentioned in this video game? No. I know you've been there. I still haven't been there. It was part of the lore dump of Stina when we first met her. You could ask about the Divine Dragon Falls. Oh, okay. And that, I don't think there was anything too unique there, but... Yes. Also, the Divine Dragon Falls map was where Radius and Garai found the Masamune. I don't know if that's actually supposed to represent Divine Dragon Falls or if it's just supposed to be generic mountain, but it would make sense for that to for the Masamune to somehow appear there since that place is so sacred. This part's over. This entire part's over. But disc one, not quite over. No, disc one is not quite over. Now, the first time we went to Fort Dragonia, we got, I think, maybe some of the best direction in the game mm -hmm. because we had a couple of cool moments we had the moment of like floating dark surge we had the moment where he said let love bleed deeper than the deeper than the seas of hell or something yeah, it's like a bon jovi that. song sure yeah it, it was really cool and and do you remember that moment that you first moved the controller and then you realized you were moving links yeah that was fucking awesome mm -hmm. all this shit right here it's uh, it's just somebody it's perfunctory. It's perfunctory. People just wrote a bunch of stuff down and just like let the uh, floating orb and Steena, the character we got five minutes ago, explain stuff to it. This game has ceased to receive any direction from Chris, this director. You are missing the symbiotic chronology. I didn't use that word right, but check it out. Dark Surge was delaying Lynx. Chrono Cross was delaying us from both getting to Chronopolis, the land of lore. I was going to say Chrono Cross is delaying us from getting to season three of this podcast, <laughs> but also true. Yes. I just thought this, this entire section was pretty weak. There wasn't much uh, direction at all. It just felt like it was written down and then dialogue given to a couple characters. And then we kind of hand wave our way back into the yeah, For body. something that you went and killed six dragons to build yourself up to, it was kind of a wet fart a little bit. Yeah. I wanted to, uh, I wanted fun guy to have his moment. I brought fun guy with me and he didn't get to have his moment. All he Chris, said was surge. As someone who's gotten all of the texts, Fun guy has his moment. Okay, good. I'm glad. Come on, Chunky. Okay, let's check in with the real net. Initializing real net. Shy guy 32 says, I am thou, thou art I, in reference to the, yeah. the Cryo Sphinx. You've um, uh, gained the persona Clotho. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm sure Cryo Sphinx, or some variation thereof, is in, is in some Shin Megami Tensei game. Initializing fake net. Sphinx is often a demon in the series. I'm a shadow of the true self. Uh, Denti says, fake net voids the bouncer. April Fools. SSD Ninja says, with all these dragons, I think Chrono Cross might be a prequel to Dark Souls. Alder There's always a dragon. There's always a bridge. Yes. Alter Impulse says, the bouncers are dealing with Dorea. Bouncing your way one day. SSD Ninja says, the first flame equals frozen flame. Skelly equals chosen dead confirmed. It's a struggle to stay relevant this late in the game. Yeah. Who's the fire keeper of Chrono Cross? <laughs> yeah. You, um, the fire, the frozen flame, of course. Oh, good. Nice. Yeah, yes. of course. Sacred Network. Uh, Alter Impulse uh, says Cena is a very good character, and if you put her and Glenn together, you have an, a sword party, and they're really good. Well, unless you have Glenn, you've made some wrong choices. Denti says, uh, so much story is centered around Garai and Dario, which is very interesting because yeah. <laughs> we don't get Dario. It's like a plot thread that picks up several yeah. times throughout the game that is not really tied to the main plot. Yep. Yeah. Assassin just says, oh my God, there are giant mushroom dads in Dark Souls. This really is a prequel. Oh God. Yeah, yeah those things. I think Dent D said this when we were ruminating on the idea of like, where, where does Cena tap into Garai? And I, I think Dent D proposes a better answer that Stina is just a summoner of past spirits. It's, mm. it's that simple, Eric. Necromancer. Yes. ShyGuy32 says, Final Fantasy Tactics is superior solely because you can summon the mighty rich. Richard? Denti says, Fake Net, play Oceana by Bjork. It's happening. <laughs> One breath away. <laughs> Very deep in the background. ShyGuy32 says, I don't think I ever once thought about the reproductive cycles of the reptites. Yeah, how do lizards do it? J question mark says, I don't think I ever once wanted to think about the reproductive <laughs> cycles of the of the reptites. Like with is Godzilla specifically, are there multiple Godzillas or is Godzilla a singular creation? Uh, Godzilla is born of uh of, of nucle nuclear like energy and yeah. nuclear fission. Have you seen Shin Godzilla? No, I keep wanting to borrow it from you. You said you had it on Blu-ray. I do, but I gave it to Kyle and never get back what to the me. Fuck, dude. Well, there's a pandemic. I mean, you can go to Kyle's house, I'm sure he'd give it to you. You know, he, he lives. lives like way over there. It's like a 20 minute drive. It's I'm actually pretty cool. I'll go get it for you. 
Uh, I live pretty, I mean, it's, it's not it's not too far from here because it's the highways right there. Okay, so here's some firsthand knowledge from Jay Question Mark, which I appreciate. He says, Lost Sanctum was such a bad area in the Trigger DS remake. If you're going to add content, please not like that. So uh, apparently that stuff is bad. But so at least George Lucas did? Yeah. Actually, you know, I mean, mo- I haven't experienced most of that stuff firsthand, but from what I understand, it feels like Kato, because K- Kato was involved with it, it feels like he or whoever went back over it in the same way that George Lucas went back over the original trilogy mm. in those special editions or whatever and just added shit and, and tied stuff together. Never get too far away from original inspiration. Yeah, it's like, it's almost the equivalent of putting uh, Hayden Christensen in the uh, in the end of Jedi. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Shy Guy 32 says, Surge dick out. <laughs> yeah, which, yes. I'm upset neither one of us made that observation. Denti says, welcome back, nubile teen boy body. Thank you. That's what I've got. SSD Ninja says, you know, I'm something of a MacGuffin myself. <laughs> Shin Godzilla is amazing. The Blu-ray is fire. I says Shy Guy. Yeah, that's, it's, that, that movie is really good. I watched that movie the night after, or immediately after the Xenogears spouse cast. Patreon.com slash retro I am. God. And I ate an entire box of kicks. I was going to say, you had an edible that night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It didn't actually even hit at all until the podcast was over. Great. <laughs> so I just ate cereal and watched Shingon's kicks. That's it was, good. It's the best night of my life, Eric. Okay. That's all for that one. Thanks, Fake Net. I mean, no, God damn it. Thanks, Real Net. We appreciate you for tuning in, as always. Stay tuned for the outtakes. This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia. It was recorded on today, January 14th, twenty. 21. Thank you, Mark Shepard, for the intro track. You're welcome, Chris. Find us on Twitter at Retro Amnesia Pod. And if you like this show or any of our other shows, please consider supporting us on Patreon if you want to. Go to patreon.com slash retro am and get early access, bonus episodes, mini series, and more. Six Radical Dreamers, Terra Enigma, Parasite Eve. Yes, coming. I, I don't know. It'll be out at this point. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Yeah. Email us at retrograde amnesia podcast at gmail.com. And Eric, until next time. Yes, we will kill fate. And now you may go back to sleep because it's your fate to take a nap. I, 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 it sounded like something on the table was vibrating. Um, I didn't write the answers down. That's why I'm having a problem, Eric. <laughs> you didn't write the answers down for the quiz we're doing? No, because I got them all right the first time I did it. So I'm going to go to the FAQ real quick. Hold on. Sorry. <clears throat> I've brought you a tremendous gift. Hey, Eric, hey, did you know we have a Patreon page? Fuck off. Where's your refrigerator? You can go to patreon.com slash retro Look at this. You, know what this you can is? find hot sounds you know what this there. Is? Additional hot sounds. They don't make this anymore. What is that? It's a Mountain Dew live wire in a can. It's a regional stuff. It's not in this region anymore. I've been keeping this in my pantry for two years. Oh. I live in your refrigerator for when we need it. Okay. Is that a, is that a, is that a penalty, Mountain Dew? I don't know if it's a penalty or a benefit. Okay. I figured if this was the Mountain Diesel refrigerator of legend, yes. it deserves like a special Mountain Diesel. Yeah. Just bear with me here because this is going to get, get a little different from your notes because something fucked up happened to me, okay? Stina says she wants to make... No. Stina, Are you tricking yourself or no. me? Do you know who the... I, I guess we kind of know who the uh, progeny... Progen... Uh-huh. I know, I know how to say this word, but I can't do it now because you said it wrong and That's it, right. it reprogrammed my brain. Progenitor. Despite their physical resilience, they are sensitive to lighting. Excuse me. Despite their physical resilience, they are sensitive to lightning. You have to mop up some shit. You have to answer them with an elemental attack. You have to mop up some shit. You have to answer them with an elemental attack. You have to mop up some shit. You have to answer them with an elemental attack. You have to stop it. Stop doing this.